Ooh, that cost how much? Hi everyone, my name is Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we are the Sorry Girls. And today we're doing another episode of That Cost How Much? That Cost How Much? We asked you guys on the community tab which store you wanted us to That Cost How much Much-ify. <laughs> we had three options and the winning one was Pottery Barn. If you guys don't know That Cost How Much? is a series where we take items from a store that you guys love, that we love, and we see if we can recreate those items for cheaper. It's like a challenge to ourselves. Yes, it's more of a challenge than it is a tutorial, but that makes it really exciting for us, and I think fun for you guys to watch as well. All right, I'm gonna get started with some napkin holders. So we're gonna start off by recreating these really cute succulent napkin holders. So these were $26.50, which isn't that bad of a price for four napkin holders, but we think that we might be able to do it for a little bit cheaper, so we're gonna challenge ourselves to do that. So we first pick up some succulents from the craft store. They didn't have them like not in these little pots. I'm gonna have to take them out, but they were buy one, get one. So all together for four succulents, we spent 10.75. Plastic rings you think would be really easy to find, but I don't know, it's like, where do you get those? So from the hardware store, we got beveled washers aka napkin rings for $3.97 for four of them. And lastly, from the craft store, I picked up this raffia bow. This was just cheaper than like the raffia not in a bow. And I was like, well, it doesn't really matter it's in a bow. I can take that apart. And this was $4.60. So my first step is to deassemble my succulents and attach them to my plastic rings. It already had wire in the bottom, so I could just use that to attach it to our rings. I'm super impressed with how that came along. Next, I'm going to use some hot glue to secure this a little bit to the base up here. And I'm also going to wrap it with that raffia straw once I take apart the bow. And all done. I think they're really cute and I think we did a good job. And these four DIY succulent napkin rings cost us $19.32 and the original was $26.50. So not a crazy savings, but I mean, it was also just really fun to challenge ourselves to see if we could do it. And we did it, yay! Okay, so this one is this gorgeous pineapple embroidered white pillow with tassels on the edge. The original cost of this is $53.50, which is a lot for a pillow, so we're gonna try and do it for a lot cheaper. To begin, I picked up some plain white fabric that cost me $8.62, and I have a pillow insert here that was $3.83, so this is gonna be the base for a pillow. So before I really get started on showing you how I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna whip up a quick white pillowcase to go over this with this fabric. If you wanna see one of our really old tutorials and learn how to make a pillowcase super easily, you can click the link below. It's old, I'm warning you. But it's very informative, so I'm gonna quick and make this right now. Okay, pillowcase is done and that was super easy. You also totally could just buy one if you didn't wanna make one, but again, it's so easy to make. So next, I'm gonna move on to doing the four little tassels in the corner. I picked up some plain white yarn and this was 314. So to make tassels, it's really easy. You just wrap it around your finger a couple of times, do a knot at the top and then a knot a couple inches down, and then you can attach it to the corner of your pillow with a needle and thread. Okay, tassels are on and so far so cute. Next is onto the part that I'm hoping ends up so cute. It's to embroider the pineapple design on the front and it's embroidered in a pretty thick thread. So it should go quickly, but it is a lot, like it's a very intricate pineapple design. So I'm gonna do my best and try and get as close as possible. First step, cause I don't wanna freehand this whole thing is to use a pencil and kind of draw out the pineapple design I want to do on the pillow and then go in with that same yarn actually from the tassels and a really thick needle and kind of trace that design. Okay, so this is how far I've gotten. I've done like the outline of the bottom and then the top little bit and it's actually not too hard to do. I find the technique that works the best is just doing like sideways stitches across the pencil lines. And don't worry too much if the stitching is like a little bit messy or unneat because the Pottery Barn one is actually pretty messy when you look at it up close, but I think that adds to like the raw sewn vibe of it. I'm gonna carry on and I think I will catch up with you when this is all done. Okay, so the pillow is complete and it is so cute and like, I'm gonna say that this is just as good as the one from the store. And if not better, because I handmade it. So let's see how this compares to the Pottery Barn one. So this one cost me only $15.59 to make and the Pottery Barn one is $53.50, so that's all. What are you gonna do with all that extra money? 
Uh, put it in a savings account for your retirement. <sighs> Responsibilities. Last up, we're going to recreate this lantern. It is beautiful and artisanal and so nicely made, but it is $79. So there's a bunch of different supplies we need for this, but we're gonna start one by one. Start with some wood. I got this for $3 from the hardware store. And I also pre-cut some MDF. We had this, but if you need to buy it, it might cost you around $6 to buy a small piece and then cut it to size here. And then lastly, to build the main part of our lantern, we're going to need some glass. So we actually picked up two picture frames from the thrift store for $4.30 altogether. So my first step is going to be cutting my glass to size, a similar size to the lantern that they sell at Pottery Barn. And I'm gonna do that with some glass scorer and glass cutter. Okay, so I have my glass pieces cut, and next I'm going to attach them to my MDF base here. Clamp it, hold it, and leave it for 30 to 60 minutes. So I have it all glued into place. This is gonna have to stay for a while, and hopefully it all works when it's done. But I'm gonna get started on the next step, which is creating little wooden borders. I'm gonna do that for the bottom and for the top to hide everything and make it look fancy. So I'm going to cut my pieces of wood to size and then paint them gold. So I have my little top and bottom gold pieces painted and they looking good. If you prime first, your spray paint will come out much nicer. I'm just saying, pro tip. But unfortunately, I don't know what happened. While this was drying, um, maybe the clamps were like a little too tight and we have a crack. The Kraken. We have a crack in our lantern. We have a crack in our lantern. I don't think it's the biggest deal. I'm going to be adding a frosted paint onto the outside to make it match the one we're trying to replicate. And there's gonna be a pattern on it, so it's kind of gonna hide it. I don't think this is detrimental to our DIY. That alliteration though. So I'm gonna tape up this crack and then I'm going to give the outside the frosted spray paint. So the frost looks great. Next, I'm going to add on my gold wooden pieces to be like a nice topper. But for the handle, I'm not gonna be doing like the thick wire molded handle that they have. For a cost effective way to go, we're going to use some rope from the dollar store. And I can paint this gold to get the same kind of vibe. And this will be purely decorative, like you can't lift up your lantern this way, but these kind of lanterns are like set it and forget it. Like if you're carrying it around like you're freaking Snow White, then you should probably do something else. Okay, cool. So I'm going to drill holes in my pieces of wood to string my cord through. And then I'm gonna attach my pieces of wood using some hot glue. So now that that's all done, I'm going to use a gold paint pen and draw on my scale design. I created a template and I just put it on the back side of the frosted glass so I can just trace it out to have a consistent pattern the whole way through. And my last step is just add in my gold rope. So my lantern is done here. Now this cost me $33.14, which is like half the price compared to $79. I think it's a good replica. The original one is really very, very beautiful and I think it's made with like real shells. But I think this is a pretty good dupe. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please let me know below which one you think we did the best on. I think we did a good job. And please recommend stores that you want us to try. There is a playlist linked at the end so you know what stores we did already. Yes, we've done Urban Outfitters. We've done what? No, we West Elm. Have we? Yeah. yeah. Anthropology. Wow. Good for Now us. Pottery Barn. Wow. What else, guys? It can be clothing. It can be decor. It can be a little bit of both. Or maybe, like, is there a category we're not thinking of? I don't know. I don't know. We might ask you next time to pick again on the community tab. So it's helpful if you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss those posts and you can be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And if you guys want any of the items that we mm -hmm. were trying to dupe today, we will link them below so you can check them out. Maybe pick them up because they are really beautiful. Pieces. Yes, we love them. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you give it a like. If you love it, make sure you sub it. And we'll and see you next, see you next time. time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>